What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today I'm going to be clearing up some common myths and misconceptions about Shopify dropshipping. So I guess you could say this is a little bit of a, a Mythbusters video and I really hope that this helps just clear up some of the just like noise okay because there's a lot of noise in the dropshipping community and you know a good portion of that you just you don't need to care about because it's either not true or it's just not relevant so yeah hopefully this video helps you and let's go ahead and hop right into it all right so the first myth is that you need just some absurd amount of money to start like i've heard people say you need like 20 grand to start drop shipping or 10 or even two and um you know while the more money you have the less luck is involved in it i'm living proof that you can start drop shipping with under 300 dollars. okay i started with like two something and i was able to make it work now granted this was almost three years ago over two and a half at this point and um you know, drop shipping is different now. It's a little bit harder, but at the same time, like you can still do it. Um, however, one thing that I do want to say is that I always recommend people have at least four hundred dollars saved up to start. Um, just because, like I said earlier, the less money you have, the more luck is involved in getting to that point where you can start funding yourself. All right, so the next myth that I want to tackle is that drop shipping is dying because it's not dying. It's just evolving. And the people that are saying that it is dying are the people that aren't evolving with it. So they're failing and they're just blaming the entire business model. But it's definitely going to be like drop shipping as a whole is going to be around like as far as I can see. I'm talking like hundreds of years if not longer if not forever because humans are going to be buying stuff online forever basically and while that is still relevant drop shipping will also still be relevant now like i kind of touched on earlier drop shipping is getting a bit harder which just means that there's going to be a slightly steeper learning curve coming into it and you just got to be prepared for that both budget wise and just like you know the mental aspect of it all right so the next myth is that you can't build a brand drop shipping from china and i really just i have to disagree with this because if you do it the right way then you 100 percent can build a brand shipping from china you can get custom packaging you can get really good quality control and you can get five to ten day shipping almost anywhere in the world now granted you need a really really good agent for this or you know you can use specific companies that are you know all they do is um branding and shipping now it's obviously not going to be as strong of a brand as if you were shipping from the United States just because, you know, your packaging is going to have some Chinese letters on it. Um, shipping times won't be as fast, etc., etc. But I still want to say that you can 100% build a good brand drop shipping from China. Really, the only thing is that long term, it may be a little bit risky to, you know, rely on all your fulfillment coming from china just because um you know it's kind of a gray area as far as how long really really cheap shipping from china is going to last all right now we're going to be talking about two common ad myths for um you know two of the biggest advertising platforms number one is that you gotta launch all of your facebook ads at midnight now i have tested this like a ton because everyone says it and you know if everyone says it that means it's true right but in my experience literally there is no difference if anything it's slightly worse to launch at midnight now again this is just my experience but really like it's probably not going to make any difference at all for you um you know compared to live launching which essentially just means not touching the scheduling at all the next advertising myth is that Instagram influencer marketing is dead. And that's just not true. Okay, influencers still get me a better return on ad spend than Facebook ads does. 
And influencers, in my opinion, are still the best way to start as a beginner with a pretty small budget. Influencers are definitely like not what they used to be, but at the same time, like I said, they're still great. You just need to know how to find good influencers and how to tell the difference between a good page and a bad page. And a lot of times that means contacting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of influencer accounts because you know when you do find that good influencer page it's like one in ten if that they're probably gonna be charging a really high price and although you can negotiate that it's just hard to find a good influencer at a good price nowadays all right now we're gonna be tackling some common misconceptions about drop shipping products the first myth is that you need all these fancy like softwares and tools and websites in order to find winning products and honestly like I use a couple softwares but I've only really recently started doing that and in the past like 90% of the products I was finding were literally just getting delivered to me on Facebook or Instagram because I was taking advantage of their algorithm and showing them that I was like interested in drop shipping products which basically means I was just like you know clicking on them whenever I saw them and then adding the product to my cart. So I got tons of products delivered to me and I didn't use any software. And even now, I only use like two softwares. One of those being AdSpy, which I always use to validate products. And I used to find some products too. And the other being DropPoint, which I used to find products. All right, so the next myth is that you can't make money off of saturated products. And I'm actually thinking about doing an entire video on this because I'm starting to like sell saturated products like purposely and I'm having some really good results. So let me know if you want me to, but really the ways that I can just spit off off the top of my head to make easy money really on saturated products is A, having a really, really good creative, which may involve ordering the product, B, um, you know, selling a dormant product, meaning maybe it was a product that was hot like three years ago, but no one has really tried to advertise it since then. So those can also be really, really effective. Another way is by country or language switching. So, you know, if a product was really hot in the United States, then you can go make an entire store in French, sell that same product and probably get some pretty good results. Point being, there is plenty of money to be made with saturated products. It's not as easy as um, normal products, but at the same time, like since it's already a proven product, if you put in the work, if you put in the time, then you're probably going to be able to make a good amount of money. All right, so the last myth is that there's no such thing as a winning product. Now, this is something that you never used to hear, but now you're hearing a lot of it. And while I understand like why someone would say that, I just, I have to disagree because in my experience, a winning product is something that you can use a half decent ad with half decent targeting and still get good results on. However, if you have like, you know, a normal product, I guess you could say that's not necessarily a winner, then you really have to have a great creative and or great targeting in order to make that product work. And even then, like, it's not necessarily likely that you're going to have the same results selling a normal product compared to a winning product. Now, again, this is just my experience, but I really think that there are definitely winning products out there. And to deny that is just stupid. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that this video was able to help just kind of clear up some of the stuff that really gets said a lot in this community and is just simply not true, um, or at least in my experience, it's not. So I really hope that this video was able to help you out. And if you guys have any video suggestions or like questions or whatever, then as always, just feel free to comment them below. You guys have an awesome day. Don't forget that big red subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you in the next one.